Good morning. Well, it's Good not morning. a good view, isn't it? Yes, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, so just wrapping up the day here. Oh, there we go. That's exciting. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to Life in Lockdown, episode two. Um, today, I'm with Jamie Jo Wright, um, who many of you will know is the author of amazing books like The Reckoning at Gossamer Pond, um, which is a few books ago now, but I couldn't find any others because I keep learning them out. So there we go. Um, it is 8 a.m. in New Zealand. And look at, the, oh my gosh, I've still got like creases in my face from my pillow because I've just got just fell out of bed. <laughs> I pretty much just fell out of bed. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, honestly, look at this. This is like, the, the haven't had a shower post bed here. I almost showed up. I was, I was contemplating for a second if I could just leave my pajama bottoms on and just chuck on a top, but I did actually get dressed for you. So <laughs> feel privileged. <laughs> and you are in, where are you? I'm in Wisconsin right now. And so I'm downstairs in my basement guest bedroom. Mm -hmm. which is where I've been sequestering for the last couple of weeks and kind of turning it into my office slash escape room. So um, one of the purposes of this, was well, not a podcast, I guess, video cast kind of set of episodes is chat to different writers about kind of what life is like for them, where they are in the COVID-19 world and what life was about before COVID-19. So um, tell us a little bit about Wisconsin and kind of, I guess what the rules are there, what people are up to, what your life is life is like in this world? Well, um, Wisconsin is on pretty much complete lockdown right now. So it's technically highly frowned upon to leave the house unless you're going to get groceries or a prescription, which I think is what most people are experiencing. So I'm not sure that that's anything super unique. Um, we've been limited to groups of five or less, which is a challenge for some people who have like 10 children. They, they're not being asked to split their houses, are they? I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, I started working from home, let's see, about three and a half weeks ago now. Oh. And um, I'm finding myself a little bit uh, slow, like my brain power is slow and I'm going slower and, but work has been really, really busy for me. I'm part of an essential um, workplace. So um, I'm in the wireless communication industry. And so cell phones and internet services um, are extremely important right now. So it's trying to keep the company moving forward and keep employees calm and, Stay up on all the laws as they're changing every other hour here mm -hmm. in the United States. I don't know if they do that in New Zealand where they just change them randomly. Yeah, so we're on alert level four, which sounds really similar to you. So stay home um, in your bubble, and your bubble is essentially the people that you live with. And you know, if you have someone who cares for your children, then they can be part of your bubble if you're an essential worker, which I am. Um, and then similar, you can really only leave the house for exercise or go to the groceries, doctor, kind of like every, everything else is shut. So like in New Zealand, like not even like takeaway food is open. Um, so when that got announced, the lines out of McDonald's drive through for like two days were like round the, round the block. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. And, but so it's, when it started, that was kind of this thing that all the debates been about what can you leave your house to do and how far can you go? Um, uh -huh. At the beginning, um it was like well you can you know leave your house to get exercise um but you know just be sensible about it and then you know people went mountain biking and needed search and rescue and so then so the list changed was like no more mountain biking no more swimming no more surfing you can't get in your car to drive to a beach you've got to walk from your doorstep and come back to your doorstep mm -hmm. um and then what's like being essential services has changed as well um in terms of what kind of, I guess, firms and companies can still be in business. And that was really complex for probably about a week or 10 days. Um, so there was lots of kind of businesses being like, yeah, we can be open. And the government being like, no, no, you can't. And then other businesses being like, we have to close. And like, you know, sending all their workers home and, mm -hmm. you know, freezing stock or whatever. And the government's suddenly being like, oh, no, actually, you can be open. So there are people yeah. like, um, can someone, someone just 
So just give us the, the rose. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not much, that's not unlike what we've had here. We do still have like takeout and curbside food is still available, which sort of surprises me because I feel as if anything's going to get contaminated, it's going to be food. But apparently that's essential. A butter burger from Culver's <laughs> and fried cheese curds. You do not separate a Wisconsinite from those two items at all. Not in any circumstance. Not You'll have a mutiny. <laughs> It'll be the Boston Tea Party all over, except it'll be the Wisconsin Cheese Curd Party. I mean, you don't do that. <laughs> do you guys, like, even for those people, like in New Zealand, you're only allowed to be open if you can maintain social distancing. So there has to be, like, two metres between workers. Do you guys have rules like that? They have strong suggestions. That's, that's how we like to put it in the United States. It's strongly suggest, we strongly advise. Um, but there's really no consequences. It's kind of like telling your child, I strongly advise you to not eat out of the cookie jar <laughs> and the stern look. And that's, that's about as, as bad as it gets. So hypothetically, we're supposed to have a six feet, six foot distance between people. So um, I will say my company, we've, we've built plexiglass shields for our desks um, so that there's a guard between the person getting their internet service or their wireless phone and we've split some of the desks that are side by side um we'll have a person in every other mm -hmm. desk so we try and maintain that distance um, and then if groups come into our stores for example we'll be like why is it when people are social distancing that essential services become essential entertainment services <laughs> because now it's like before Hey kids, let's all get in the car and we're going to go to the movie theater. Well, they can't do that now. So it's now, hey kids, let's all get into this car and go buy mommy a new cell phone case. <laughs> it's like, great, but I don't know that a cell phone case is essential. Maybe home internet service, but cell phone, you could probably wait. So we'll have groups literally of six, seven people, mom, dad, grandma, aunt Peg, uncle Hank, they're all coming in at the same time. And so we've trained our, uh, our associates to gently but kindly say to maintain social distancing in the health of all of us. We would ask that only the essential individual needing the service stay in the store. And the rest of you can wait outside. Is it cold in Wisconsin at the moment? Like, it wouldn't be an attractive proposition to wait outside for very long, would it? Um, well, for if you if you're from Wisconsin, it's probably it's doable. It's it's in the 40s right now, so waiting in the car wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, um, um, and they can turn the heat on. We've got a um, similar like you're only supposed to take one person to the supermarket. Okay. Yeah. And um, and most like pharmacies and places like that have like a kind of a one person in one person out role and you have to like stand at the door in front of a barrier yeah. and answer all the questions and then they have to like clear you as needing an essential service and then you yeah you we've walk in our, our local walmarts and convenience stores are doing that where they're only letting a certain amount of people in per square foot and then some of the locations have also stated that um if your children are under the age of 16, they're not allowed into the store. Wow. Um, partially, I, honestly, again, I don't think it has to do with trying to protect the child's health so much as trying to cut down on Wisconsin's desire to party during a pandemic. And so I'm not even kidding. Like we haul our children out, stay home. Oh, that's like the green light to go out. So everybody goes out. You have a blizzard here. It's no joke. I have one store in the ruralest area. It's all farm. And there'll be a blizzard with 10 to 12 inches of snow coming down at once. And everything around us will shut down and our store will get packed with people. They'll drive their snowmobiles to our store because they can't stay inside. So to shut down Wisconsin, you legit have to be like, no, 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 no. We really meant it. So now if your children are under 16, don't bring them in. And oh, also, by the way, please don't bring in your dogs. <laughs> That's also been on the signs. <laughs> and then there was almost a run in the grocery stores because we ran out of hand sanitizer. 
Yeah, which, so which is, you know, okay, you ran out of hand sanitizer. Well, then you run out of rubbing alcohol. Okay, well, this is Wisconsin, right? <laughs> so what's the next best thing after rubbing alcohol? The hard liquor case <laughs> is completely wiped out. And the panic has nothing to do anymore with hand sanitizer. People are trying to stock their cabinets with their, you know, Tito's vodka because they're afraid that people are buying it for hand sanitizer when we need it for dinner. <laughs> we, we got a party tonight, people. We got to have it's our got a party. Now. Come on. We are Germans. We need our alcohol in this area. Our alcohol and cheese, you don't separate us. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that oh. is awesome. Yeah. So a, apart from um, partying it up with uh, the hard liquor in the evenings, uh, what, does your, what does your life look like now? Um, I'm very drunk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's not, people. I promise. The question is, do you really want to post this now on your, on your, on your page? I'm not I sure. Do. It's getting better by the minute. I mean, you might lose no. some readers out of it. But. I might. I might. <laughs> I'll just switch from the uh, inspirational market to the more general. No, I am not imbibing in heavy amounts of liquor. Um, my life is actually, um, it's been actually, from one standpoint, sort of a blessing because it's fun to work from home and, you know, run upstairs and refill the coffee cup. Mm. And, um, take a hey how's it going to my kids and you know sometimes we'll take a break and play a quick game of uno or something like that so you know, there's been those elements that have been fun I think some of the things that have been the hardest is really not having the face-to-face -face fellowship hmm. um I think even with you know church on Sundays um or bible studies or things like that we, we've our church has done really well in doing a lot of it virtually but there's something different about physically being in the same place versus consistently viewing somebody's face on a computer screen. Mm. It's so true. I mean, um, like Josh, my, you know, 98% extroverted husband, like he'll like see someone in our street. Cause we kind of have a corner section. So and lots of people these days are out walking every day just to get some fresh air and stretch their legs. So he'll like see someone like walking down the street, heading away from our house who we know. And he'll be like hanging out the window, yelling at them. Nick, Nick, Nick. <laughs> it does. It's like a degree of desperation. Yeah. I was sitting on our deck um, last week and it was sunny. It was actually a warmer day. It was in the 60s. And our mail lady drove up the driveway because we had a package that was too big for the mail, the mailbox. And she gets out of her car and she looks at me and she goes, do you want me to bring it up to you or should I just leave it here? Or how do you want me to handle this? And the only thing I could think to say was, I love you. <laughs> and she looks, she's just, what? And I said, I'm sorry. I just haven't seen another human being besides my kids in like three weeks. And she goes, oh, honey, I know how you feel. I love you, too. <laughs> so, yeah, we are going a little bit, a little bit nuts over here. <laughs> I relate to Josh. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. He's, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's struggling. The, 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 the five of us in his bubble are, are not quite enough. Thank goodness we're not you and living in a rural area. Like I, <laughs> he, he would be one of the people needing to buy an essential cell phone case just to talk to someone else. Well, for real, I had to go pick up groceries. I did my online order yesterday and um, I got eggs. I scored eggs, by the way. Um, but I had to, you know, you just pull in and they bring the groceries out to you and they put it in your car and I felt like just holding my arm out the window, going, don't go, don't go, <laughs> come back. But the kid was like 15, so I think he would have been really creeped out. <laughs> Little old lady sitting in the car asking him not to run away. But yeah, it, it is funny, the element of, I don't want to say desperation, but um, you kind of fluctuate. I, I fluctuate being an extrovert between periods of just feeling really euphoric like hey I've got this to like almost severe melancholy where I'm just like 
I look out the windows. We live in 40 acres of woods. So my nearest neighbor is almost a mile away. So it's like I'm making friends with the raccoons and the possum and the deer, and they just don't give back like other human beings do. <laughs> You're going to come out of this basically Heidi. Like. I will, yeah. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up my internal Pollyanna, but she's she's dying slowly. <laughs> she is. It's, I mean, I, cause I'm like a pretty classic introvert and I was thinking the other day, I was like, oh my gosh, if I'm struggling, like how are all those extroverts doing? Like <laughs> this must be you like know? building their resilience. Like they've never imagined they would ever have to. It is a test. I'm the only extrovert in my family and my daughter this morning, I'm like, do you want to call your friend Sophia? No. Why? Would you want to call Izzy? No, maybe later. Like, do you want to talk to humans? Why? <laughs> and she was like, why? And they, all three of them are so perfectly content. It's like we are on a, you know, four week going on five week vacation, just the family. And I'm thinking into June, if we actually get this lifted where we can go on family vacation, I'm like, I don't want to go because our family vacation is yeah. to a cabin up north <laughs> yeah. with a lake. Yeah. And no people. We have, we have vacationed people. We have been vacationing for months. <laughs> I'm going to go vacation with some other people I haven't seen for the last time. Right. Right. Let's go to Disney World and just sit and watch the people. <laughs> <laughs> and hug them all. And hug them all. <laughs> oh. So oh. what are, um, in, in light of your little three quarters introverted bubble what's like what's keeping you sane right now um well we have started an almost nightly um championship of farkle if you've ever played the dark dice game farkle i i won't go into the explanation but it's you just you shake the cup and you roll the dice and you try and get a high score and you just keep building up your score so we've been doing that every single night with the kids and um that's been fun because I, I do like games, so I'm, I'm good with that. And then um, I found it difficult to write, which is really strange because mm. I have more time to write and I'm finding myself not writing because yeah. I'm just, I don't know. And I don't know if it's because I'm sitting in front of the computer so much during the day now because that's all my work mm. is right here with the headset on for six, seven hours straight talking to people and doing Zoom meetings. So I don't know if after that, I'm just kind of like, the. Mm. Um, so I've been doing a little bit of reading, but mostly just hanging out with the kids. Mm-hmm. Nicole Deese and I were talking about this last night because she's the episode before you and she has a book due on April 22nd. So she's like, she's deep. Oh. She's deep in deadline land at the moment. And she was saying the same, we were talking about it and she's saying the same thing that she has found it really hard to like get into her creative space because you know like kind of like separating yourself out from everything that's happening in the world at the moment into this like totally different you know Mm -hmm. imaginary world that is just so diametrically opposite to what everyone is living in right now um is really hard and I was saying how I'm on um I'm doing edits for start with me at the moment and how grateful I am that I'm in that part of the process because like I've got you know a framework on the page that I'm just like right. critiquing and reworking. I don't have to like, I'm not writing new stuff and having to go into like the, the creative space. Um, yeah. So I think lots of writers are really struggling with that at the moment. Just I've heard the- quite a few mentioning the same thing. And then it's, I think too, it's when we write, regardless of the genre, there's usually an underlying something traumatic happening or something that's tilting the character's world's, um upside down and right now it's hard to want to go there like I already feel like I'm living in a you know dystopian novel I don't know that I really want to kill anybody on the page right now you know maybe we should all just be happy so I don't know if that plays into it a little bit either um so you but. have the haunting of Bonaventure Circus coming out is it later this year yeah the haunting at Bonaventure Circus comes out September 1st is when that comes out so that's pretty so much I just done. finished 
I just finished the main edits on that. So. Yeah. And are you, have you got, you're going to start working on something new-ish? Yeah. yeah, I've got, my next book is due July 15th. So I'm, I'm working on it. One word at a time. Don't get there. Summoning, summoning creativity as best as I can. So. <laughs> summoning the raccoons and the possums. Exactly. Maybe exactly. they can for you. There's going to be lots of cheese curds in this novel. <laughs> and cell phone cases. <laughs> and cell phone cases. Cheese curds and cell phone cases. <laughs> oh. oh. Wow. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for being my second guest on Life in Lockdown. Um, it was super fun. It was. And I'm glad we can reassure your reassure your readers that you're not the person stripping the liquor stores of their supplies. <laughs> no, I did uh, not strip. The, I might have stripped the coffee aisle, but I did not strip the liquor aisle. <laughs> Alrighty, I'll see you later. All right, thanks.